Hello, everyone. Hello. Thanks for your patience. First of all, um, for, I'm Todd Shaman. I am the head of content strategy for Google VR. Um, it's so amazing to see so many people here, and I'm so excited uh, for all of the interest, and I choose to believe that um, this is just a sign of great, great things to come. Um, I am going to talk, I was trying to think about what would be an interesting topic um, and, and as it pertains to jump. First of all, who knows what jump is? Okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll start to explain it for those who, whose hands didn't go up. Um, but I, oh, whoa, why is this taking off without me? <laughs> it's jumping. All right. I guess I'm... All right. All right, there we go. All right. So what I thought I would do is talk about um, a project that one of my colleagues, Jessica Brillhart, um, did that uh, was to create some original content um, when we launched, when we, when we announced Jump um, back in May at Google I.O. Um, Jessica is a, a, a terrific filmmaker, um, and when we originally um, put the Jump together, um, she took um, the camera around the world and filmed something that we could demonstrate at I.O. Um, so a lot of these insights that I'm going to talk about are Jessica's. Um, um, merely the messenger, but I think they're really interesting, um, and I think that hopefully they'll uh, create some good um, fodder for conversation. So, what is Jump? Um, we announced it at I/O this year, and it's basically three things: it's a uh, uh, 360 stereo capture rig um, that has 16 cameras in a circle. We're working on that with with um, GoPro, and the second thing is the assembler, and this is. Part of the magic of this pipeline, um, it basically takes uh, computer vision, lots of Google computers, um, and stitches the footage seamlessly together in an insanely fast uh, way. Um, and it takes a, a significant pain point out of um, the process of having to manually massage all of these different cameras um, into uh, a, a seamless image. And then the third thing, um, which we've heard a bunch about already, is YouTube. And um, basically, we want anyone anywhere to be able to experience um, all of these amazing Stereo 360 experiences. And there's no better platform than that in the world, we believe, than, than YouTube. So um, when we step back and when Jessica went out to make this first piece of content, using the prototype jump rig. The state of uh, editorial in, in VR, she describes as something like this. It's really all over the place. And, um, and this talk is really designed to kind of highlight some of the, the things that, that we've learned through this experience and some other ones. Um, and, and the first thing that um, we did is came up with a name. Probabilistic Experiential Editing. Um, we know that the acronym needs um, some work. Um, but we think that it actually uh, touches on a lot of how you might think about editing um, in 360. So let's break it down. First, probabilistic. How likely a viewer is to see something and to do something. Um, so this is basically like, how likely is uh, a person experiencing this um, particular scene um, likely to look in a particular way or act in a particular way? Um, and the reality is you don't totally know. Um, but what you do know is there are various points of interest um, around, and you can use that as a way to kind of bet on where someone is looking. Um, you don't know for sure, but you can guess. So here's an example. Um, this is a bunch of rocks. So this is part of um, when, when Jessica went around the world, she went to uh, amazing places. This is not, not a bad um, gig to Iceland, Japan, Puerto Rico, a lot of places to film um, with the rig. So this was one of, one of those places. 
Um, is there anywhere that you might probably bet that someone might be looking? Not necessarily. Um, there are a few of these things, but um, little peaks, but you don't really know. However, here, this, seems, this scene has what you could consider a definitive point of interest, right? The climber. And in addition to the visual um, point of interest, the sound emanating from the environment is, is coming from him too, which you probably won't be able to hear, but trust me. So you can't be assured that someone's going to look there, but you can uh, you know, have a reasonable guess. So here's uh, another one where you know, there, there are, um, here there are four points of interest that are all the, the windows, and would, would, you'd expect someone to be looking through windows like you would in, in real life. Um, and then from an audio perspective, the announcer is speaking, so you can see her um, speaking in this scene and hear the output from that speaker that's circled up there. So back to the mountain climber. It's very likely that someone's looking at this, this climber, um, although you can't count on it. Um, but you can use that to your advantage. And you can cut from him to something else that you want the viewer to witness. And so uh, this can be called, um, it's a match cut, but instead of um, a visual match, it's an attention match. That's um, the way you might think about it. So you can cut from here to here. Um, OK, and there, there are a lot of examples of this, right? All right, next word, experiential. So this is the notion of the interaction between the viewer and the scene. And um, really what this means is it's, there, there are contexts for different environments that you can kind of anticipate how someone might um, like experience it just like they would in the world. Um, so it's determined by the viewer and by our experiences. So how long do you expect someone to want to stay in a certain place, or how long will certain things hold someone's attention and why? And these are, again, not de determinate, but there are, there are things you can play with. So here, um, back to the tram. So you know where someone will most, most likely look, um, but why and how? And probably um, they're going to be doing the same thing that, that they'd be doing while in a tram in real life. Um, not looking at a window, but looking out of a window, uh, which means you can motivate a cut by um, reciprocating or extending that experience. So here's an example of that. So if you're looking um, through that window, uh, you are rewarded by, well, I guess either that window or these windows. So if you're looking through the deep window, you're rewarded by the corridor there, and if you're looking out the other windows, you're rewarded by a uh, horse looking back at you. So again, none of this is 100% uh, determined, but you can really use this and play with it, and really be kind of experimental and playful with it. All right. Bear with me as I'm flipping between these computers. So. Um, Sometimes the kind of environment can inform the interaction just as much as what the, um, as what the viewer brings to it. So here's an example of that. Um, this is back to the rocks. So these rocks are actually pretty important. And um, when Jessica initially cut this, she used the, the rocks as um, an on-ramp for kind of a new experience. It's, it's relatively calm. The viewer can get a sense of the rules of the experience without being kind of thrust into things uh, too quickly um, and before moving into the next shot. Um, and so once you kind of establish that comfort level, you can play with it and then you can jump into a, a new shot that has kind of a more, more to it. And in this case, what the next shot had was an audio base that was on a different side and kind of caused, caused the viewer to turn and um, take advantage of the kind of 360-ness of this whole thing. All right, editing. So how is traditional editing done? Clip to clip, kind of in a, in a uh, linear way, right? There's one scene, another scene, another scene. And so how do you think about it in 360 space? 
Well, one way just visually to think about it is, is not that, but kind of from, from the center and out. And so what does that mean and what are the implications of that? I mean, one general implication, which a lot of people talk about, but it's true, is you think more about crafting VR like a game than a film. It's more like Myst than it would be like The Godfather. And, and there, are, there are a lot of other things there too, but I'm gonna skip ahead to this. So this is sort of the notion of playfulness with this stuff, and this is all, and I'd love to hear if others have thoughts and experiences around what, what has worked and what hasn't, but the notion of rebelliousness and playfulness around what the expectation is in cutting to something or cutting around to something else and when, when those transitions should happen um, and have fun with it. So here's an example of that. So this was um, a ferry ride that was in the world tour. And if you're looking where the kind of expected place was to look, you're looking out forward um, on the ferry. But then if you turn around, you actually see Jessica, the filmmaker, in the background. And she kind of put herself in there intentionally um, as sort of a reward to look around um, like that. So, and there's a lot of ways you can surprise your viewers that way. Um, here's another one where um, you're, this is more just uh, as, as opposed to a smooth transition. When the ferry ride ends, you jump an entirely new, quiet scenario where a guy's working on a motorcycle. And play with your audience that way and see kind of what the, what the impact of that is. So it's all about discovery. Uh, you can plant things in a scene in such a way that the viewer discovers them and discovers new elements. Um, and you keep them kind of surprised and kind of in line, but also guessing. So, um, and if you get, a, I think it is, it's kind of like a dance, dance with the viewer. And if you think about the discovery environment, you really start to make some amazing stuff. And this obviously varies by the type of content that you're creating. In this case, this is disparate pieces and kind of how you weave them together, but I think it has implications more broadly, and it's pretty interesting. All right, so one, this is the creed that kind of work, the working creed. You lead a viewer through a story while taking into account, either actively or passively, that a viewer may choose a different way through. So that's kind of how, what, that's the challenge and the excitement of this, um, and how it might be different than uh, what we see elsewhere. So. In the near future, the squiggle becomes something more uniform. That's it. Thank you.